victory in the place today, God. We thank you, Father God, for what you are yet doing, how you are moving behind the scenes, how you are making a way, God, how you are opening the doors, God, how you are breaking the chains, Father God. Breaking the chains of addiction, God. Breaking the chains, God, of wrong thinking, God. Breaking the chains, God. You are setting free. You are delivering, God. You are upholding the tired and the weary, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for what you're doing now. David was in a place of hopelessness and despair. I know it's the holiday season. You say, why he ain't talking about Christmas yet? Y'all done heard that forever, however long you've been alive. So you're going to understand that in these Psalms, we find something that God is trying to say to us in this season of our lives. In 2022, he's saying, stay focused on me. Listen, he told us some weeks back, uh, bless the Lord at all times and let the praise be continually in your mouth. And ever since then, I can't say ever since then, before then stuff been happening. But especially since then, a whole lot of stuff just keep on happening to say, I'm going to test that. Are you going to bless the Lord at all times? I'm going to do something. Are you still going to bless the Lord at all times? And I said, okay, woo, Holy Spirit, you keep testing me, but I'm going to bless him at all times. Whether I'm in the cave, whether I'm out of the cave, wherever I'm at, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. And so today I'm going to make a joyful noise into the Lord because that's what he calls us to do. Worship is our weapon. I don't ever want us to forget about that. As Pastor Grider gets ready to come forth, I don't want you to forget Worship is your weapon. It's not about how we feel. I was reading that somewhere this week in one of my devotional thoughts. That's why they call it a sacrificial praise. And a sacrificial praise just isn't on, isn't on Sunday morning when you come to church and you say, I'm going to lift my hand even though I don't feel like it. It's not a sacrificial praise. That is, but that's not the only kind. A sacrificial praise is to keep getting up every day, going and doing something you don't want to do, but God told you to do it. That is a sacrificial praise. A sacrifice of praise is keep on loving someone that you're sick of. But God say love them anyway. That's a sacrificial praise. We got to get this church talk out of our minds and get it straight. This stuff is for real life. So don't just come in here, oh God, I gave my sacrificial praise. And then go home and cuss your loved ones out and quit your job. and do. All. Listen, keep doing what you don't like because God told you to do it. A sacrificial praise is I'm putting my own hopes desires and dreams on the back burner because God this is what you said for my life that is a sacrificial praise that is a sacrificial life and God is saying man if I can get some more people to live a sacrifice life I can do something in this earth I can do something if I get some more folk to live a sacrificial life everybody's worried about what about me what about me what about me but God said if I can just get you to sacrifice Listen, I am a living testimony that when you do decide to do what God called you to do, he makes a way. He makes a way. He makes a way out of no way. I want to encourage somebody today. You've been leaning to your own understanding, as we said. But God is saying, hey, trust in me with all your heart. You keep trying to figure it out in your own way, your own plans. But God says, trust in me with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me. And guess what I'm going to do? I will direct your path. Somebody today needs to hear that because God wants to direct your path. But you keep leaning to your own understanding. So stuff ain't working out. And then you're getting mad at God over stuff you did. Don't we act like that as human beings? We get mad at God when we went and did something he ain't told us to do. We're mad at everybody in the world. And God is looking at us like, just trust in me. Don't lean in your own understanding. I want you to be encouraged today, y'all. Worship is our weapon in our cave experience. Let's put our hands together and welcome Pastor Grider today. Come on, come on, let's continue to worship. Come on, let's continue to bless our God, who is certainly more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or even ask of. And 
God's richest blessings be upon his people forevermore, not just today, but forevermore. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. want to give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is my life, who is the head of my life, who is my everything, my all in all, and certainly want to give honor to my bishop and his lovely queen, Bishop Thomas and Mother Thomas. Thank you for all that you continue to do in enhancing the kingdom and building the kingdom. You know, certainly, and I want to honor my pastors, Pastor David and elect lady Octavia Thomas. Come on, let's give it up for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. It pays to live right and do right. I had a question posed to me yesterday, how, how's my bishop doing? You know, some people, they have what I call Bishop Pinocchio syndrome. And I say, he's doing well. And the individual came back and say, if I don't know nothing else, his, his faith is intact. I say, you can rest assured on that. His faith is intact. And so I, I bless the Lord on this day. And I'm so appreciative of his great love and certainly his great mercy towards us. Uh, I get chills, you know, as I'm coming down the road and coming here to be with family, friends, loved ones from all over. It is truly a pleasure. It's truly a blessing. And I thank God for that because the Bible say in all things, give thanks. Hallelujah. In all things, not when it's going good. Even when it don't look right, it don't feel right. But it says in all things, give thanks. Don't render evil for evil. It says in all things, give thanks. And so I give thanks to the Lord today and certainly for those who Facebook live and on uh, line, we thank you for joining us as well. And again, I am just so excited, not just because it's Christmas, it's that time of the year. This time of the year is really a difficult time for family, for people, because the suicide rate goes up because people are not able to give and do what they want to do and how they would like to do, Bishop. But it does not take away my excitement, past in my joy for what God continues to do and how God continues to do it and what God is doing in this place. And let me tell you something, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I'm a part of this part of the body of Christ because I love it when my pastor gets up here and he begins to exhort the people and begin to push because God is pushing him and he's pushing the people you know, to want to be better, to want to do better, and certainly to strive for kingdom living and, and, and receive the kingdom blessings. And so I am truly excited about uh, what God is doing coming out of the year 22 and what God is getting ready to do in the year 2023. So I'm not waiting for 2023 to get started, Pastor. I'm already getting started now in 2022. So that way, if it's his will, Bishop, and his plan that when 2023 comes, that I'll already be walking in that that he's called me to do, that that he's assigned me to. So that way it won't be no struggles and it won't be no issues or anything of that nature right there. And I'm, again, I'm so appreciative and so grateful. You know, somebody says, sound like you rambling. No, I'm not rambling or whatnot. I'm just telling you the goodness of God and all that he continues to do or whatnot. Even when I'm not good and even when I'm full of attitude and not full of gratitude, God is still good or whatnot. And I still learn how to give him thanks in all things or whatnot. Even when it seems like everything just falls to the wayside of by and just seem like ain't nothing there, mother, no support, no help, anything. He's still good. I still understand by giving him thanks in all things or whatnot. And so I bless his holy name because his name is holy and certainly his name is righteous. Hallelujah. So trust me, I always have a praise down on the inside or whatnot. It ain't just because sometimes when this body don't act right, I get up in the morning because I don't feel like getting up. Like Pastor said, you got to go to work and face people who you really just simply don't want to face or whatnot. It's simply because he's still good. 
Hallelujah. Even for some who don't want to come to church, you be, let's be honest, you, you really don't want to come to church. You say this is the holiday season. Why are we having Bible study? Why are we, you know, this, the, well, well, pastor should cancel taking consideration. Well, God's still good. So it's important we give him thanks in all things. Hallelujah. I know I do, mother. Yes, hallelujah. Like you say, worship is the key. It, 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 it's the key, and I'm, 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 I'm you know, it, it's amazing when, you know, you had a place in your life, or when you think you had a place in your life, you know, you, you know a little something, something other, but then God always come and show you something new to try to help you to, to enhance not only you, but help to enhance others, and so I, I, I bless him, brother, after having a it's been a long week for me, but I say hallelujah. I give thanks in all things because I work in Port Orange all over in Volusia County and had truck issues. Truck broke down and had to wait for them to bring me a truck and that truck went to acting up and whatnot. And this on a Friday, you know, and it's on a Friday. You be wanting to get work done, get home and get ready for what? The weekend. So none of it didn't plan out like how I thought it would, mother. And then had to help a friend out because their mother passed away. So he didn't have nobody to get the rice. So now I got to get home and get a phone call. Where you at? I said, hey, I'm just getting off work. Okay, well, I don't have nobody to pick up rice. So now I got to go pick up rice. So now I hadn't even made it home. Then I had a, a 7 o'clock appointment at the barbershop. So by the time I get home and really get situated, it's going to be about 9.30, 10 o'clock. Then on top of that, got to rise up by 7 o'clock and go hang out with my other family. That's an all-day event. And then here comes Sunday morning. What Darren Cole say when Sunday comes. That's what Darren Cole say when Sunday comes. But yet I give God thanks in all things because he is certainly better than good. And I bless him. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's get down to business. Glory to God. Hallelujah. On this second Sunday, what we in the month of December, Christmas. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mother, Bishop, you know, Pastor, God is, I mean, worth, he knows he's amazing and, and just simply awesome all to himself. And I was asking the Lord this morning, because I had to be up, mother, had a nine o'clock meeting with our union stewards for, at our job. So been running, but I said, God, I say, you got to say something. What is it that you want to say to your people concerning your people? I said, because I know you have been given a good word down here in the temple. And certainly I don't want to do anything um, wrong to go undo what what the man of god has been doing i just simply want to come add to it and be of help be of assistance and so as i begin to read and 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 you know you could read and sometimes mother bishop you know how you pull out stacks of bibles and stuff like this right here pastor you just say boy god i know you finna just drive this word home this is gonna be an on time word this is gonna be a prophetic word i i just know i know i know it without a shadow down and then all of a sudden god come and just flip the script on you he can do that that's simply called being open to change and so as I begin to read and, 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 you know, study and, you know, a lot of time the sleep monster try to come in and get you or whatnot. So, you know, bitch, I have to get up, walk around. And one of my favorite drinks is old, good old cold Mountain Dew. Shoot some energy up in me. So Elder Lord, once I got past all of that, he say, nah, I like how God talked to you. He say, nah. Al, he said, go to the book of Exodus. I said, yes, sir. He said, Exodus 14, verse 13. He said, well, pastor, go up a little further. And so if you have your Bibles, go to the book of Exodus, chapter 14, and I'm going to start here at... Let me make sure I'm there. Yes, Lord, there we go. 
All right. Here we go, Exodus 14. Let me find my spot. Exodus 14, starting at verse 1. Verse 1 reads, Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they turn and camp before, by Harioth between Migdal and the sea opposite Baal Zephon. You shall camp before it by the sea. Verse 3, for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land. The wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army. And the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Verse five, now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Also, he took 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out and went out with boldness. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them camping by the sea, by Harith before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. Oh, you know, they were hollering and screaming then. So they were very afraid and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, because there was no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. Ah, verse 13 is what I want to get to. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, but stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Not talking about tomorrow, but today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. We're going to stop right there. And so mother, Bishop Thomas, Pastor David Thomas, and lady, elect Octavia Thomas, and to the El Bethel Temple family, those of you who are live, online, Facebook, what's and ever, where you at? The word of the Lord for us today, all inclusive everybody, is for us to simply stand. He told them to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. And so for some of us, I can speak for myself that the year 2022 has had some ups and downs. We know that life presents challenges and many different things. And as we read here, the children of Israel, they were hollering and complaining when here God had done already spoke a word and say, I'm going to bring you out or whatnot. And so, you know, as 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 we do, instead of like you say, Pastor, instead of com uh, worshiping God and praising God, we have that old spirit of complaining or whatnot, saying, why you got to take us this way? Why you got to do it like this right here? Why can't we just hit the pause button and stop? for a minute or whatnot, when simply he told them to just stand and see the salvation of the Lord. And so for some of us, for the year 2022, it has been rough for you. It has been rough for everybody. But the thing we have to understand that as God prepares us for the year 2023, he's trying to get us to be able to stand throughout the rest of the year 2022. Some of you sitting out here right now, you faced with some difficulties and wondering, well, 
how am I going to be able to stand throughout the rest of the year? Well, that's what you have to do. You just simply have to stand because the problem is you've been doing too much. Sometimes you have to sit down and take a seat and let God simply do just what he do or what not. I had to realize that, Mother, because sometimes you can find yourself, Pastor, trying to do too much and think you're not doing not enough or what not. But here he, God had already gave him his word. He gave him his promise that I'm going to bring you out. So what are you complaining? What are you murmuring? What are you bickering for? All I need you to do, people of God, is to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord or what not. But for some of us, we too busy moving around. We can't sit still long enough. That way God can get his hands on us or what not. Sometimes you simply have to learn how to sit still and be quiet and look to heaven and say, God, I need your help because I've been doing this too long. That's the problem. I've been doing this right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hands off of it and allow you to do what you do. Help me, Holy Ghost. And so he was telling them, mother, to simply stand and see the salvation of the Lord. That's after having done all. And, 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 you, I, and, and for me, Pastor, I looked up the word stand. When I looked it up, mother, ah, the biblical meaning of stand, you remain firm and immovable. Or especially when you are the smallest or the youngest, the last one standing. I said, mm, I said that sounds good. Let me go look a little bit more. And so I found out another one. It says stand. Say, what does it mean when God says stands? It simply means you don't bow down to nothing. That simply means you don't compromise nothing. You don't compromise your faith. You don't compromise your walk. You don't compromise your salvation. You don't compromise anything because, I, you know, there's a saying, if you don't stand for something, then you'll wind up going for anything or whatnot. And so we're in that day and time. We're in that season. That's why the book of Ecclesiastics call it seasons, mother, because every season brings on a different challenge. It's no different than life or whatnot. And so now that we're in the year 2022, we're faced with so much stuff where people now will take the liberty to come stand out in front of the church and talk about we the Hebrews, the Israelites, and all this other stuff or whatnot, and want to create an argument, want to create the spirit of confusion. But I, I, I believe that we serve a God who's not the author of confusion. We serve a God who does things decent and in order. And so when that kind of foolishness comes your way, it ain't your job to stand up there and tongue wrestle with them because the Bible said his word is forever settled or whatnot. And certainly when you have the word deep down on the inside of you, you don't have to stand out there and tongue wrestle with nobody and go back and forth with them quoting scriptures because they think they know scripture. It's one thing when you know something, but then everything that you read in these 66 books, mother, when you don't take none of this stuff and you apply it. That's why I have a problem. But then you go in there, you take some of the stuff, you twist it and turn it and fit it to your use. And so what now you and I have to do is just simply take a stand for righteousness. Yeah, yeah. A lot of what you're saying in there is true. I know this him, but you're not going to persuade, persuade me to go yonder ways. I'm standing on the solid rock. And that solid rock was the one who shed his blood over 2,000 years ago. And that blood still works today. That blood is cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That blood is what backs up the death angel. That blood has healing in it. That blood has deliverance in it. That blood has hope in it. And so you think I'm going to move from that position to get over to that position? No, I'm going to do like Daniel. I'm going to stand. I'm going to see the salvation of the Lord. I'm not going to compromise for you and nobody else. Help me, Holy Ghost. Mm. And so it causes you to have to just, just simply take a stance. Can I be honest with you, family? I had a disagreement with a family member this week. And normally, Bishop, 
<laughs> Certain stuff I don't allow to pull me out of character. Because I know that's what it's designed to do. And they threw up in there, oh, that's what the church. I said, oh, no. I said, don't throw the church in this here. Don't throw the church in this here. Right is right and wrong is wrong. And this is wrong. Now, you, you, you can try to fix it up, put whatever kind of spin on it you want to, but it's wrong. But I, I, I'm not moving from my position. I'm not losing my stance from where I stand at on this right here. Right is right and wrong is wrong. And you can't convince me no matter how you're trying to figure it or put it in your mind, but it's still wrong. And they went on and on and on. But they didn't realize, boy, they got a hold of a rock while I wasn't backing down, mother. <laughs> See, when you, you dealing with carnal-minded people, you have to use God's wisdom. But at the same time, you still have to stand for righteousness sake and not back down and not take down. Ain't you got to go up there beating on your chest talking about you the big bully off the block. No, 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 no. Because one thing I've come to understand and I'm still understanding is that the Holy Spirit will equip you with everything that you need and allowing you to be able to stand even in the midst of a bunch of wild dogs or wild heathens or whatnot when they think they got the best of it and they think everything is closing in around you or whatnot god knows how to protect you even in them situations and not allow you to fold up and just say well i'm gonna walk away from this right here no brothers and sisters he will give you the strength he will give you the moxie to be able to stand up and say i'm gonna stand for what's right i'm gonna stand for righteousness sake I'm not going to take down to this here. And so, mother, as I looked in there, mm, and he was telling them, stand to see the salvation, he was already letting them know, my son, which is Jesus, which salvation is simply grace, he was letting them know, Jesus with you every step of the way. He, he, he with you. So why not stand? Why not Yes, the storms of adversity are going to come. You Sometimes for some of us, you just simply have to take a palm tree mentality or whatnot. Some of the strongest winds of a storm will come, but because the palm tree's roots are simply seated so deep in the ground, and not only are they seated, but they're locked in. And that way, when the winds of life, the winds of adversity begin to blow, that tree may bend to the left, it may bend to the right. Other trees like the oak trees and all this other stuff will fall down they will crumble but it's something about that palm tree that will stand right back up once those winds have stopped blowing and look like it was never even touched or whatnot and that's what God is trying to do with a lot of us or whatnot yes the winds of life go come the winds of adverse have come into your life and some of you got some wind blowing on you right now and you just simply don't know what to do but the word for you and I today is simply s-t-a-n-d is to simply stand and see the salvation of the Lord and watch Jesus the Christ the anointed one work this situation out for you you've been trying to work it out for the longest in your hand and been too deep in it. Get your hands up out of it because his hands are the ones that can make it happen for you or whatnot. That's what's wrong, mother. We, we, we talk about faith or whatnot, but faith is something to where you just simply got to just walk in, even though it don't look like it, but because I trust you, God, you are a God who I've seen not fail me one time. I've watched you bring me through some of the most difficult situations. Even when my attitude wasn't right, my attitude was jacked up and I had my rear end on my shoulder but yet I had enough common sense to watch you bring me through step by step though it wasn't the way that I thought it was going to turn out but yet you brought me through and yet still bringing me through so why not take a stand for what's right it says Fake people have an image to maintain, but real people just don't care. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you know, you, you know how you, some folks you got to try to fake it till you make it. 
you ducking and dodging, you slipping and diving, dipping and hipping and all this stuff right here. And before you know, you so as all get out. You wondering why you hurting. Because you have an image to maintain. But see, when you just flat out real, mother, you just real. And some folk can't take it. It just aggravate them to no end, Bishop. And they'll think you just hard and callous. It ain't that you just hard and callous. It's just simply that you real. And, and, and you ain't trying to be fake no more. That's why God brought us up out of sin anyway. It, it ain't no sense you're staying there trying to fake it till you make it. You come to church skinning and grinning like a possum smiling. Telling, oh, bless the Lord. You saying all these cliches. Then they hit a certain tune on the piano. You want to, uh, uh, uh. You get up here and shout. And you miserable as all get out. They go around here, bother with other folk who simply trying to stand for what's right. You know how they do. I thought you was retired. <laughs> She's still doing it. She helping out. Well, well, you know, Bishop sitting down and, and Pastor David and late laid out there. Why well, mother got to do this right here? You ain't doing it. So somebody got to stand in the gap. The pastor and his wife can't do it all by themselves. It's called, we need some help. Help. I used to watch my little grandbaby, the oldest one, get in a fix. And when she get in a fix for a child, help. I let her squirm for a little bit. Help. It's just like the Lord do us. He'll let you squirm. Get yourself in some stuff. After he been gave you specific instructions, Mother Jackson, and simply told you to stand. Don't bother that. Don't go nowhere near that. There. But we got to go up there to my, oh, I'm fire baptized. I'm Holy Ghost filled. I'm tongue talking. I got me some powers with me. And by the time you run up there, you fire baptized, you Holy Ghost filled, and you got all kind of powers with you. And that devil standing there looking at that devil saying, now come on. And the devil, and, and the devil done, 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 done took his spot. He done took his position in standing. You, you now, you look at the devil like this right here and tell my up, oh, I got to get out of here, whatnot. God, God ain't called me that right here, whatnot. No, you the one went up in there. When simply God told you don't go there, he told you to stand. Stand still. You ever, you ever, for some of y'all, I raise my hand. When your parents, how many of y'all got one of them good old mama whoopings? And she tell you, say, don't move, don't make me miss. Don't make me miss. Or if she wind up hitting herself. Oh. And, 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 and you try to do all the moving that you can do, but don't realize Mama got on. She 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 better than Tommy John with that with that belt, that switch, whatever she stench your court, whatever she gonna get you with. You started trying to move, shake and bake or whatnot, and Mama ain't move. Mama just done stood her position and just just tan up hips or whatnot. Stand, people. Stand, Elder Lydia. Stand. Sometimes you 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 know you get to a place where I feel like I want to move or whatnot. But one thing one thing about God, Pastor, he if he if it ain't for you, he ain't gonna let you get there to it. And he told Moses, just tell him. You know, some folks tell you say, well, why you got to preach this hymn? Why you? I'm just giving you what the Lord. All I need for you to do is follow instructions. Just stand. That's all. I don't need you to question me. You know, a lot of times we'll, we'll want to question God, but then we don't want the answer that God going to send back to us. See, let me give you three acronyms for standing. I'm going to leave you alone. Now, some of you ready to get to the mall and go shopping. And instead of you putting that tithes and offering in the church bucket, you going right over there to Millennium Mall. And don't get me wrong, ain't nothing wrong with that there. But you know what Proverbs say. Honor the Lord with the first fruits of your possessions. Stand simply means stay true 
and never deviate. Stay true to your call. Stay true to who you are. Don't go out here trying to think you, um, ladies, you want them real Atlanta housewives and all this stuff here. Don't do that. You stay true to who you are. Men, don't, 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 don't get out here and fool yourself and think of you, Idris Elba, Denzel Washington. Stay true to who you are. Don't, don't deviate from what God has called you to. Don't, don't, don't do it. Because even though when it got tough for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he said, boy, this cup, can you imagine? And see, we, we just imagine, we don't even have cups. We be crying when a light bill coming in and it done went up $300. I can't take this here. Well, either you're going to take it or you're going to be in the dark. Stand and believe God that if you're short, God got something on the way that's coming that's going to take care of it. But stay true to who you are. The other one is start taking action so that you can get you some new direction. Start taking action now. Don't tell me, well, Pastor, when 2023 come in, I, I, I'm going to be right. I'm going to come to church more. I'm going to give more. Start now. Well, Pastor, you, you told me to be on the, the, um, the hospitality committee, so I'm going to make sure that when anything pop off, I'm going to cook some food. I'm going to do that in 2023 now. No, start now. The third one. Seeking truth and new dimensions. Seek truth and new dimensions. See, you're able to get all this stuff if you stand and allow God that as God have you in that standing position, you allow God to make you, allow God to shape you, allow God to mold you into the men and women that he's calling us to be certainly in these last days, certainly for kingdom living, for kingdom building, because there are souls out there that need to be won. There are souls out there that need to come into the kingdom or whatnot. It's like Pastor say, it ain't based on whether they smell good, they look good or whatnot, because some of them ain't going to come in here smelling like you. They ain't going to come in here looking like you. They're not going to come in here talking like you or anything of this nature right here. So what you're going to do? Are you going to deviate? Are you going to not take a stand and say, God, I'm still going to love these people because the same kind of God that love you when you was in your mess, he loved them just as well or whatnot. He may have to take a little bit more time with them, just like he took a little bit more time with me and you. See, some of us don't, don't like that. They're in standing, it's going to cause you to have some patience and for you to spend some time with God and spend time with people who you just simply don't want to deal with or whatnot. And so you'll come to find that out the more as you walk with Christ and the more you say you save, you sanctify, you fill up with the Holy Ghost and you so anointed, that anointing it ain't just for you to walk around here with a collar hung up around your earlobes and thinking you this, that, and the third or whatnot. No, baby, that's for you to show straight love because that's what God showed to you or whatnot. It ain't for you to run around here and you think you holier than thou and you mean as a rattlesnake and everybody that come and look at you wrong, you ready to strike them or whatnot. No, baby, uh-uh. Even when they strike you, sometimes you got to still be able to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Somebody say, uh-uh, I don't think I'd be able to do that right there. Well, it's going to happen to you. You just keep coming to church. You just keep reading the word. You just keep doing what you're doing. You're going to find out that the devil don't play fair. The devil will slap you a time or two or whatnot. And a lot of times it's going to make you want to say, I'm going to slap you right back or whatnot because this slap don't feel good. But you simply just have to stand and see the salvation of the Lord and allow God to work that thing out because you go up there thinking you can whoop the person if you want to. And before you know, they be done turned your lights out or whatnot. And here you sitting up over in ORMC calling past the David talking about what done happened or whatnot. You know what done happened. You done got your lights turned out unexpectedly or whatnot because you simply just wouldn't take heed to the word when the word simply told you to stand. You went up in there complaining and saying all kind of stuff to the people talking about, well, you didn't do this here. You didn't do that there. And before you know it, kapow! 
wow. And next thing you know, you sleep and don't even know why you done went to sleep or whatnot. When all you had to do was simply take a stand for righteousness and say, well, come on, brother. Come on, sister. Let's go to the altar and pray. Let's go sit down at a restaurant somewhere and let's talk about this thing. Not go talk about the person, but go talk to the person. The Bible says in all thy getting, get you some understanding. So yet while you in this standing position, allow God to give you some understanding so that that way when the unsaved and the unrighteous come up in here, you ain't already quick to condemn them and judge them and throw them in the lake of fire or whatnot. When you already on the edge of being thrown in the lake of fire, but then you want to throw somebody else up in there. This the time now for you to stand up for righteousness sake and show some love to people. People need love during this time of the season. This ain't the time for you to flaunt yourself around here like you all that in a bag of chips like you really got it going on. You jacked up and tore up from the floor or whatnot. So how you gonna go around here and tell somebody they ain't this and they ain't that or whatnot? You done messed up one or whatnot and before you know it, you'll find out this person who you really don't even want to deal with. Now pastor, they got the minister to you because they find themselves in a position to where they, all they've had to do was stand all their life and begin to depend and see how God moved in their life. They didn't know how God was going to move, but they knew God was going to move. What you think about the man and woman who out here on the street panhandling every day? All they can do is stand. They don't know where their next meal going to come from, but you and I know where our next meal going to come from. We got a roof over our head. We got a bed to lay our head down. These folks don't have that there. So what we doing complaining and murmuring all this kind of stuff right here, it's like the pastor said this morning, that's when you simply ought to thank God and yet while you're thanking God you can still give thanks in all things or whatnot because the Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose and if you are called according to God's purpose then what you complaining about you should be in the position like Moses told him just stand and see the salvation of the Lord and watch God work this thing out for you get yourself out the way that's the problem too much of self is in the way instead of allowing Christ to get in the way when you get self out of the way you won't have no problem standing even though I'm messed up from the floor up looking like a mango seed just tore up all over but yet I'm still going to stand why because I believe I trust the God that I serve because my faith can't be moved because I know my God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can think of I know this body may not be acting right this morning but because God I'm going to stand I'm going to stand in righteousness say then I'm going to believe you to send healing because you said healing is the children's bread so why not if I stand because it hadn't happened for me then I'm going to stand for my bishop I'm going to stand for my brother I'm going to stand for my sister I'm going to stand for my pastor I'm going to stand for my pastor's wife even though the children may be on drugs but because God I know what you did for me so therefore I'm going to stand for my pastor's children who are on drugs I'm going to stand for a relative who on drugs I'm not looking at my situation I'm looking at somebody else's situation and sometimes in your standing position when God has got you standing you got to take your eyes off your situation and put it on somebody else's situation because you simply looking for God to do something for you all the time but then what are you doing for God in return Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me give you these eight points and I'm going to leave you alone. You know, I learned this here, Pastor. I wrote this down this morning. And the reason why, Mother, a lot of people are not able to stand, never let your emotions overpower your intelligence. You say, why you say all this stuff? Because I done been there. I done been emotional. I done learned, I used to learn how to fake it till you make it. That's why. Because see, yes, your emotions are your emotions. But a lot of times your emotions can take you to a place, a place where, okay, you done been there now, but then now it's time for you to come out. But then because you so stuck in your emotions and in your feelings, you can't come out. So you choosing to stay there. 
So that's where you take your stand at. And so the Bible says offenses will come. So when somebody say something to you, a lot of times they ain't even got to say anything. They could just look at you. And before you know it, you shattered into pieces. It's because you've allowed your emotions to overtake your intelligence or whatnot. The Bible says offenses will come, but you don't have to take them or whatnot. So why you stand over there in your emotions, in your feelings, when you can come over here and stand in righteousness, say, and know what the scripture says? Never let your emotions overpower your intelligence. Yes, emotions are part of the human makeup. I'm not denying that. But at some point, when are you and I going to grow up? When? And stop feeling like everybody picking on me. They don't like me. You don't like yourself. That's what you don't like yourself. And because you're so used to when somebody say something to you getting offended, that's because you really hadn't counted up the cost how many people you done offended. That part right there, we don't think about. You don't think about how many people you may not have verbally. Curse is too nice, mother. You cussed them. Like you say, you done cussed them out. But then if somebody say one little word to you, oh, you just, done, oh, they got to scrape you up off the ground because you done. And then ran back and told you one side of the story. Mother, I learned something. It's three sides of every story. It's his side, her side, and then it's God's side. I tend to stay on God's side because Jehovah Shaphat, the righteous judge, he know how to judge the situation and the spirit of truth will be brought out of it. That's why you have to stand for righteousness sake. Moses was simply trying to tell him, stand. And boy, they went to hollering and screaming. Them people going to kill us. They are going to do all kind of stuff to us. You brought us out here. You got us over here. You got us believing this stuff right here whatnot. And here, the Lord had done spoke the word. He said it to them. How many times you have people say, you say, well, this is what the Lord told me to tell you. And they come right back and try to refute it. It's almost like, and this way you have to take a stand as a leader. You almost want to just say, You just have to say, amen, quickly agree, because his word will come to pass. Let me hit you with these right here, and I'm out of your way. One of the things when you take a stand, you'll stay hopeful, simply because life is full of challenges. But hope is the key to enduring and conquering them. The Bible said Jesus Christ is the hope of glory. Anytime, let me, let me say something to you, people of God. When your eyes open up and your feet hit the ground, there's hope. All hope is not lost. It's simply what you do with it. It's what you do with it. The second one, pick your battles. Pick your battles. I have had a situation because, you know, a lot of times people look at you and they look at your side and they want to try you, Pastor. <clears throat> How many of y'all been like that there where folk want to try you late October? They look at you and then, you know, you say, and you say in your mind, you don't want these problems. You might want to put it in reverse and back up. That's real there. Yeah. That part. If you don't get that part, you're going to get this part. So you simply have to just pick your battles, Pastor. That's, I, I, I'm learning that, Bishop. You have to pick your battles. 
because you will sometime when you go up in your office and you come to yourself, you just be riding home in your car and you, the light done turned green, but then the light done went through another cycle. You said and you felt like you'd have been in a 20 round fight. Now you say, where this come from? And everything in you just depleted and gone because you done jumped in and you done picked the wrong battle. God said he'll fight for you. Number three, make a conscious choice to be happy. You make a conscious choice. Just because your neighbor looking like sad sack Sam and because you took a right to stand and be happy and then because every time you see him come out, well, good morning, what's so good about it? Well, look at it like this right here. It's what I learned a lot of times. You ain't got to try to, you ain't got to preach to him. God give you wisdom. Look at it like this right here. People say, and mother, this, this is my slogan, what I use. Well, how you doing? I say, hey, anytime I'm 10 down instead of up, it's all good. Mm-hmm. What can they do with that right there? Uh-uh. You can't do nothing with it. Make a conscious decision that you're going to be happy. Make a conscious decision that when God blows his breath in your lungs, when he wakes you, he calls your name out, that you make a decision because he's already made the decision to wake you up. You make a decision that say, this is the day that the Lord has made and I choose to rejoice and be grateful in it. Instead of getting in your car as you get dressed going where I sure don't want to be. I should have took a sick day. Take the sick day. Don't go in there aggravating and upset at the, the workplace, the workspace. Somebody can have it. If, if they ain't got on no gospel, they might have on some soft jazz music. What you playing that for? Take that energy and leave it at home. Or, or go get you one of them punching bags and, and punch it out. Number four, reflect, relax, and release. See, some of us in here now, you on overload now. You don't know how to just simply reflect. For some of us, you just don't know how to relax. Sometimes you just be in a restaurant and just, just you know, you just want to relax. You know, just, just have a good time. Just laugh. You know, we have those times, those moments, but learn to just relax or whatnot. For me, my relaxation time, mother, is when them children ain't bothering with me and show them when the grandchildren ain't bothering with me. And I can have my alone time with my clown blanket or whatnot, and I'm sitting on the sofa, and I'm watching TV, minding my business, Bishop, even when the phone ain't ringing. That's my relaxation time, and I can get my nil away for it, and I'm good. I'm in relax mode. It ain't that I'm not saved, I'm still saved, but I, I'm just because Jesus rested, God rested when He created that. He rested. Why can't we rest? That's part of your stand. Resting. We don't like, well, I got to do this, I got to do that. I, 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 that's the problem. Eyes on the throne. When I learn to sit down and take a seat, that's when S-T-A-N-D can come in and do what it needs to do. The problem is, is eyes on the throne. Sit your happy self down and relax. I could do some laundry sometime, mother, and see all them clothes back there. And it's like they looking at me like, tonight, come here. And I do like this right here. I play like I don't even see them. Walk right past them. It's going to get done, but I'm not finna bother with it now, Pastor. I'm not finna do it. I'm, I'm, finna see, I'm finna watch this TV program. Now, ladies, don't y'all get mad. Now, I remember um, I used to call Pastor Lisa the nap police. <laughs> Naps are essential. I'm te- they are essential. I'm telling you. And when she would come home from work, the boys would come home from school, I'd be in there, and everybody would take a good old nap. 
But for some reason, I'd be the first one wake up. By this time, we had a white car. When that white car pull up in the driver, say, hey, y'all better get up. Here come the nap police. I said to myself, this woman just won't let everybody relax. Take time for yourself. Take time for yourself. Take time for yourself. That means sometimes you have to simply, even for, and I had to find this out, Bishop, you even have to step away from ministry to take time for yourself. It ain't that you're not saved. <clears throat> but you need your needs need to be met. God needs to do something in you. If it means go to the beach or whatever, hey, go to the beach, throw your hat on, throw you some shades on, throw your tank top on. That ain't that don't mean you ain't saved. You still saved. You just need some time to yourself. Because your a lot of your time is a lot of caring and looking out for other people. We don't do this here. And that's how we get burned out. That's how these extramarital affairs come in here because we don't take time out and self-care for ourselves and taking a vacation. I had to learn that the hard way because you're too busy trying to fix everybody else's problem. Who, who there to fix your problems? And your problems study mouth. And by the time you be them fixed there, they going on or whatnot. And here you sitting around looking there, you got problems to the left there, you got problems to the right of your mother, and they just study piling up. And these folks just going on doing whatever. And you saying, now nah, I remember I prayed for them. I can't even get nobody to pray for me. And I'm sitting over here, got a stack of problems here, got a stack of problems here, got a bunch of them sitting on top of my head, a bunch of them sitting in front of me. Now I done helped them with their problems. Who gonna help me with my problems? And that's why you have people around here going loco, which means you just you you just done lost it. You have just lost it because you're too busy. You forget you've neglected yourself. I, I do that for my children. Don't bring me none of your stuff. Y'all grown. You got children. I love ain't that I don't love you, but daddy needs some me time for myself. I was in the valley of decision, Pastor, when the, when the, when the offer came for me to go to Las Vegas and, and the baby would just say, go, Dad, go. I say, you know what I say? I am going. Amen. You grown, you can fend for yourself. Yeah. Take time for yourself. Yeah. That way, because mental health is real. I understand you can be Holy Ghost filled and, and talk in tongues and you know the words from Genesis to Revelation, but the Bible also tells you seek wise counsel. That's what that means. Go sit down and allow somebody to help you with your stuff. And you'll find out you'll be a better person. Because a lot of time, we, we find ourselves, even at least a lot of time, we find ourselves with a lot of bitterness in us. All the things that have happened to us in ministry, things that have been done to us unbeknownst, Bishop. And then I'm telling you how to get fixed, and I need to be fixed. So take time for yourself. If it means you and Lady Octavia got, hey, the group know what I tell them. Y'all got it. And I ain't in the business of micromanaging either. I can't do nothing about it anyway. I'm way on the other side of the world over here. You over here, fix it. You know what to do. And this is one of my favorites. I call it the three L's. Live, laugh, and love. Live, laugh, and love. It's enough stuff going on in the world today for you and I, certainly for us as believers, to walk around with our face balled up. Yes, life has problems. Life has its challenges. Because the word of God told us to stand. 
then we need to learn how to live, laugh, and love. Don't get mad at me because I, 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 you know, um, I'm living. Because for some of us, Pastor, I've come to find out, some of us are just existing. You ain't living, you just existing. You doing the normal function, the normal routines to get by day to day. And when you go back home, the spirit of depression is waiting on you. And just sit right there and say, I've been waiting on you. Come on up in here. Instead of you opening your front door and saying, I'm going to put this right foot to you, you getting up out of here. Because I'm going to live, I'm going to laugh, and I'm going to love. Because that's one of the first commandments in the Bible is love. The Bible says laughter does the body better than a dose of medicine. Some of us just need a good old gully wash and laugh or whatnot. You just sometimes have to just laugh at the devil. Instead of you sitting up there showing the devil, you just, you're going to make an ugly face. The enemy ain't moved by that there. Laugh at his foolishness. I believe it's number seven. It says, get in touch with your spirituality. I wrote in, get in touch with Jesus. Get in touch with Jesus. I was sharing with my older sister yesterday. She said, yeah, my high power. I said, baby, your high power is Jesus the Christ, God, his father. I say, he got all the power. Yes, his power is higher than anything. That's who your source is. That's your high power, God, his son, Jesus the Christ, baby. I say, I'm not trying to beat you up or condemn you. I say, but I, I want you to get that because that's who's helping you to, to go through what you're going through, baby. And number eight, take action. Take action. Simply take action. The time is now for you and I to take a stand. Mother, as much as I know, I'm allowing God, Pastor, in me to take a stand. Things that I thought I could do, things that I try to do, I have to back away from it. And I realize that now, being 54 years old, and if, if it's God's will, February 14th will make the double nickel for me, 55. But I'm learning and this is why it's important. Every leader needs a leader to help you to stand. Every leader needs a leader. And that's why I admonish my leaders, our leaders, my pastors, because we need leaders. Because how can you expect to lead when you don't even know the first beginning of how to follow? That's all a part of knowing how to stand. That's all a part of it. Every leader needs a leader. And I thank God, and I don't say this lightly because I stand in their pulpit, I stand out, but I mean it with everything within me because it's important, it's imperative for you to know how to stand. And as you're standing, you making sure you're getting the right instructions on how to stand. Because see, a lot of times you could be standing, but you could be standing in the wrong position. And the blessing of the Lord will shoot right past you. When your leader has told you, say, son, daughter, I need you to stand right here. Then you stand right there. Don't go looking at what Joe Blow doing over here, Sue Sal doing over here. Your leader told you to stand right here. If they tell you to stand, you stand there. Certainly, the type of leaders who are not so much concerned about, yes, your spiritual, but your natural life as well. All that's a part of stand. 
See, God don't he he don't leave nothing out, mother. Because he's about the whole man. That's why it's called the body of Christ. Bringing us together as one. Unified. Unified. That's what it's about. Being unified as one. Because he said he's coming back for a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. I believe that. So we have to be in a position to where we're able to stand. Some of you right now, you say you're going to wait till the year 2023. The Lord had me to say this to a family yesterday in a service. Don't put off what you can do today talking about tomorrow. Because their mother had transitioned over. It was a brother and four sisters. You all do what you need to do today. Because now the matriarch of the family is no longer here. So you for now are going to have to do what? Take a stand. Some of you in here now, you've been like this right here, vacillating. East and west, north and south. And in your posture and, and standing. And here, God has spoken to you several times. Even when it's called for the uh, altar prayer. And you say, no, nah, I won't go because I'm good. I'm all right. That slogan. But you're really not all right. In other words, the truth be told, it's okay not to be okay. Come on. See, that's how you get your help. You got to want the help. The help is here, but you got to want the help. And learn to just say, God, here I am. I need your help. I need to be able to stand because I'm facing some stuff right now. Some of us in here right now, because if the Lord allows to see Monday, you face some stuff. You don't even want to see Monday come. You want Sunday to be here as long as it can because you don't want to see Monday. But he said, today is your day for you to learn how to stand so that way when Monday comes, whatever come Monday, you're going to be able to stand. Because you're not standing in your own strength. You're standing in the strength of the Lord who's able to keep you, keep us, keep you from falling. And some of you probably right now just want to fall right now. But God said not so because of the call and the anointing that he has on your life. And you steady running, but you done run out now. And so now, the Lord says, it's time for you to stand. Whomever needs prayer, the altar is open. We're here. If you've been having trouble standing, say, God, I don't know how to stand. God is here to help you. He's helping us. He's helping all of us for those who want to be helped. Now, if you don't want to be helped and you decide you want to go out the door the same way you came in, that's on you because he's knocked at the door. It's up to you to open it and let him come on in. So I offer that to you today. Stand. We're here to pray for you. Father in heaven, we certainly thank you. We thank you for your word and the word that you spoke to the children of Israel through your servant Moses and telling them to stand. And I know and I believe, Lord, in this day, hour, this time, in this season, you're saying this to the church for us to stand and see your son, Jesus the Christ, in every situation every circumstance no matter what it looks like no matter what it feels like but for us to stand God to stand even those God who, 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 who are in their minds wrestling in their spirit wrestling God that you will begin to move upon their hearts God and break up the fallow ground 
that whatever it is that's standing in between them and you, not allowing them to stand in the place, in the position that you're calling them to, break it up now in the name of Jesus the Christ. Break it up now, God, that we would be made whole from the inside out, God. And we can better serve you and better serve the kingdom. We thank you now. We bless you. We honor you. We certainly praise you. And we give thanks in all things, God. Even if I was standing, if it causes us to be in an uncomfortable position, that simply means you're doing something in us, God. It's designed not to be comfortable. It's designed to take us out of our comfort zone, take us out of our, our, our place of comfort and convenience, God. Because then we know then uh, complacency can't set in because it puts us in unfamiliar area, unfamiliar territory, but yet you're there with us every step of the way to lead and guide us and have us to stand even the more. We thank you now. We bless you, we honor you, and we praise you, and we certainly love you, Lord, with all of our hearts and our minds and our spirit, Lord. For it is in Jesus Christ's name that we pray, and the people of God say amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, my pastor. Come on, come on, come on. We can certainly do better than that. Let's let God know he's worthy. Come on, come on. Amen, amen, amen. While Pastor Grad is going to his seat, let's stretch our hands. God, we thank you for this man of God. We thank you for this word that he has brought into the house. God, we pray that you would replenish him now, Father God. Every bit that he poured out, God, restore it into him now, God. We thank you for his faithfulness this vessel that came alongside to help god we thank him for coming and being a help his entire ministry god coming and being a help to us here at obethel god so we pray your blessing over him now god again go before him father god be everything he need and more god supply every need father god open every door that needs to be opened god let the blessings flow down not on him just on him but down to his children and his children's children we thank you for this now in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen god bless you pastor grider we appreciate you we appreciate you Listen, I want to also encourage you, and I was, ju I was just thinking about it the other day. It's amazing how God works. Pastor Grada came in and shared that, but I was just thinking how every one of us needs somebody that we can bear our all to without being judged. Okay, hear, hear me now, hear me now. The toughest part about being a Christian is when you talk to the wrong folk, they begin to judge you. The toughest part about being a pastor or anything with a title on it is when you begin to bear how you feel, folk judge you. So then, therefore, you don't want to say nothing. You stay closed up. But God doesn't want us closed up. So every one of us needs somebody that we can talk to and say, listen, this is what I'm going through, and there is no judgment. If you don't have that in your life, you need somebody like that that you can go to and talk to. And guess what? They ain't going to judge you. They're going to pray for you and say, okay, let me, let me help be your strength right now. Let's pray. Let's pray. That's what being a Christian is. It's not about what? You drank a whole bottle of liquor? Oh, you say I thought you was? That, that's not what it's about. You went and confessed something you did and you were sorry and they don't went and told her. We need people in our lives that we can bear our all and say, you know what? I made a mistake. I'm sorry. That's what keeps us mentally healthy as well, because trying to walk around and, and bear the load on our own, oh boy, we just get ourselves into a mess. So find someone you can share and be careful who you share with, but find someone that you can share. You're, you're all what you're going through. That's what David did. Yes, got to be able to trust him, got to use wisdom, discernment. But that's what David did in those caves. He poured himself out to God. And, and then at other times, he had other folk that was going through stuff with him that they could just sit around and talk about what they were going to, and none of them judging each other. So let's not be judgmental as Christians when someone comes and shares. And let's know how to keep things confidential. It's a confidential thing. And so the general rule is, listen, if it ain't about, you know, if no one is in danger, 
if they come and tell you they getting ready to do something, put somebody in danger, that's something else. But if there's some, if nobody's in danger from it and they just are saying, then that's their business in between you and them. You ain't got to go spread anything. So again, let's bless God for what he's doing. I believe God is talking to us, the whole man, right? Mental health, spiritual health, all these things are important in our lives. We're getting ready to move to our time of giving. And as they come, I want to remind you of a couple of events that are coming up uh, today, actually, is December 11th. That's right. It's our fundraiser. Uh, if you have an opportunity to come in, uh, pick up a dinner from Dexter's Birdland, which is downtown uh, on Church Street. Uh, you can stop by their place and order. And again, today, anytime between, I think, 1 o'clock and 7, if you let them know you're from El Bethel, El Bethel Christian Academy, if you're supporting, even if you call and do your order over the phone, let them know that. A portion of those proceeds will come back to our youth department and our school. That is happening today. What we'll also will keep you informed of December the 13th, that is the Christmas program that will be happening December 13th. That's Tuesday coming up at 7 p.m. here at Under the Rainbow here at the Temple. Our Christmas program, our about the Christian Academy and some of our other uh, youth will be a part of this program as well. On December 25th, anybody know what that day is? It's Christmas Day, right? But it also falls on a Sunday. So we will have a one hour service on that Sunday. If you cannot make it, we understand. Okay. If you can make it, we'll be here for one hour. I know it's a Sunday. So whoever got the mic, understand it is still one hour. All right. So it's a one hour service. We will be blessing God for what he's doing on that day. Uh, but it is Christmas Day and we want everyone to be able to go and spend some time with their loved ones and their family and their friends. Maybe you want to invite them to church that day and then go on and celebrate whatever you like to do. December the 31st, that is New Year's Eve, right? We normally have watch night service. That's a Saturday. So we will have watch night service that uh, evening. I don't know what time it's going to start. I haven't heard anything from Bishop Morris yet, but I do know that we normally will have watch night service on the 31st, which means the following day, which is a Sunday, we will not meet here and service. Amen. Somebody say amen. Don't act like y'all disappointed. Oh, man. Okay. We are, we'll be here December 31st, rolling into January 1st. Probably won't leave here till after midnight. So I'm not going to say, hey, y'all get back up and come on Sunday. I'm going to be somewhere asleep myself. So January 1st, we will not have Sunday morning service, but we will still have our Wednesday evening service that next week coming up. Again, it's a day for you to spend some time with your family, your friends. It's a new year. Um, stay tuned for anything we may be doing in the beginning of the year, whether it comes to fasting or time of the denial, uh, whatever that may be, or if it's just a time of meeting together for prayer. I'm still uh, listening to God and hearing what he's saying, but I want to just make you guys aware of those things that are upcoming, different events and things that are that are happening. Amen. So we're closing out this year, getting ready to move into the next year, looking forward to what God is doing. But let's finish this year strong. Amen. Let's stand. Let's stand in the midst of all that's happening. Uh, we're going to get ready to give now. And if you are ready to give, we want you to show so by standing. And you'll be following the direction of your ushers. If you are giving online, you can do it through our Zelle, which is El Bethel Temple at Orlando.org. That way you can do it electronically if you're watching us at home. Hallelujah.
we're going to get ready to pray over the offering, and then we're going to dismiss you guys as well at that time. Um, but go ahead and stretch your hands this way and stand me if you could, if you are able to. Amen. God, we bless your name for these offerings we have received. We thank you now that you are using them towards the building of your kingdom, God. We pray you give us insight, wisdom, and understanding on exactly what to do how to move it and spread it and put it in the place that you wanted to go that may that it may accomplish your purpose god i pray that you bless those that gave father god that you would open up doors for them whether it be through promotion or business uh opportunities or whatever it may be god to bless them not only just financially but bless their families and their their children and their generations to come god we pray you bless even those that were not able to give we ask that you would move in their lives that they would have to be be able to give next time, Father God, that you would open up doors and opportunities for them as well, God. We thank you for what you're doing. And now as we get ready to leave this place, God, we bless your name for the words you've spoken that we will stand. God, we remember, God, that even in the midst of everything that's going on, we will bless you at all times. Your praise will continually be in our mouth. And God, we want to say thank you for touching the body of those that were sick, God, touching the mental uh, places in our minds that were uh, feeling anguish, Father God, for moving and having your way, God. We want to remember those that are still sick, God, that may be going through. God, we ask you to touch Mother King, who wasn't feeling well and left the service, God. We pray that you would continue to touch uh, Brother John Denard and Deacon Clifford Sams and Sister Audrey Sams and 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 all those, God, Elder Joyce Brown and Topper Cor and Lawrence Sparrow, God, and continue to strengthen Bishop Thomas as well in his body, Sister Lisa Roberson and Brother Richard Roberson, God, just the names that I've heard this week, God, but there are so many others, and we thank you, God, that you are yet touching them now in the midst of this, God, and so we bless your name, God. We ask that you watch over us and keep us safe as we get ready to go from this place into the week ahead, God. Go before us, prepare the way for us, help us to show up to every situation, realizing that we carry Jesus, the hope of glory with us, God, into those situations and encounters. We bless your name for all that you're doing now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being here today. We hope to see you on Wednesday evening. Actually, we hope to see you a little bit later on at the restaurant. Dexter's Birdland. Stop by and get you a plate and uh, enjoy it. And then we hope to see you on Wednesday evening in our Bible study time. God bless. Come on.